This is Kim Shanley of Tennis Reach. In one of my first videos, I talked about how Tennis Reach is trying to connect the universal with the particular techniques of tennis. So it's always about, at the end of the day, getting better at tennis here. But we want to look beyond the narrow boundaries of the, what we usually look at in the tennis world. Step off the reservation, as my friend Jim McLennan used to say. Take a look around, see what we can apply, see if we can get better at tennis. So one of these universal problems of all sports is this problem of connecting the sources of energy in our lower body with the power generation in our upper body, whether it's swinging a golf club, hitting a baseball, or swinging a tennis racket. The problem is essentially dissimilar, and there is a similar approach to solving it, although each sport has its own unique techniques. So what is the problem? The problem is that our lower body, one of the main sources of our energy, if not the main source of our energy generation, only works one way essentially in terms of the knees. So the knees only basically go up and down, right? They have very little rotational ability, only 10% rotation in the knees. So all the energy coming up from this lower area has to come up in this vertical manner. The problem again is that we, in most hitting sports, we're into a rotational movement with our upper torso and with our hitting arm. So if we only have 10% rotation in our knees, we have basically 180% rotation in our torso. And then if you add your shoulder and hand in a swinging motion, you know, basically with a follow through and preparation, we almost have a 360 degree rotation. So how do we go from energy generation going vertically with almost no rotational ability to this 180 or 360 degree swing of the tennis racket or the baseball bat. So if you go out to any little league field or country club or tennis training facility and you watch beginners and intermediates, you'll see one essential thing, that this lower body is disconnected from this upper body. It's essentially like if we're a car, our engine is sputtering and our transmission doesn't work. So in all sports, we have this universal problem and we also have a universal solution described by in the martial arts where they've studied this for hundreds, if not more than a thousand years. It's called the ripple of power. And I'll demonstrate this in a tennis context now, but you'll see how it works with Steph Curry in basketball. So the ancient expression in Tai Chi, which is one of the major disciplines of the martial arts, uh, starts out this way. So power is rooted in the feet. So imagine as we shift our weight back, we're driving energy down so we can rise up. So we have power coming from the ground up. So it's rooted in the feet, powered by the legs, carried by the waist, and expressed by the arms. So that's the famous Tai Chi expression that describes this ripple of power. In today's video, we're gonna look at Steph Curry's ripple of power, how this transmission of energy from the lower body into the upper body ends not in a rotational action, but in a linear shooting action. And then we'll look at how the ripple of power compares with Roger Federer's forehand and other strokes. And at the end, I'll show you how to strengthen this ripple of power as a tennis player and apply these particular techniques to your tennis game. So in this first part, we're gonna be talking about Steph Curry. And first of all, let me say, we don't wanna oversimplify. There are many sources of power in our basketball or our tennis game. Uh, but I believe this ripple of power is one of the most fundamental and the one least understood. So we picked Steph Curry to look outside the tennis silo for athletes that are remaking the boundaries of their sport, and that's certainly Steph Curry. Now, Steph Curry generally acknowledged to be the best shooter in NBA history, but more importantly for our demonstration today, he's also widely, well, he's widely accepted to be the greatest long distance shooter in NBA history. And the ripple of power, I think, has a great deal to do with this. Before we talk about Steph Curry and his shooting action and the ripple of power, let's talk about the main of Curry, the basketball court here, we have a playground a court that's shorter than the NBA court, which is 94 feet long from the baseline to baseline. So here I'm standing on the free throw line, which is 15 feet away from the baseline here. 
Now, as we move out to here, this is at the top of the key. This is a three-point arc. And in the NBA, the distance from the baseline to this cone is 23 feet, nine inches. And by and large, for the entire history of the NBA, which is about 75 years, almost all shooters shot no more than this range. And even today, you'll see 95% of the three-point shots coming with the player just an inch or two behind this 23 feet, nine inch arc. So when I talk about Steph Curry redefining, like all great athletes, the boundaries of their sport, in this case, I really do mean the boundaries. Because now with Steph Curry, we're starting to enter a new territory out here. And this marker here is 28 feet away from the baseline. And it doesn't seem like that much distance between basically 24 and 28, but it's a huge amount of difference. And Steph Curry is not just shooting shots from 28 feet, he's shooting between 28 feet and the half court line here at 47 feet. So this is completely no man's territory up till Steph Curry. So what's amazing about all of this is that from this three point line, the best shooter in NBA history is actually Steph Curry's coach, Steve Kerr on the Golden State Warriors at 45.4%. So think about that. We're a long way from this uh, hoop here and Steve Kerr could hit it 45% of the time. Now, Steph Curry is fourth on this list, but Steph's doing a lot more things than Steve Kerr ever did, so we can't compare it in apples to apples way. Well, what's so amazing about Steph and his power generation is now that he's shooting between this 28 and 47 foot mark, and the NBA is now starting to keep these statistics for the first time. So in the 2015-16 season, for the entire season, Steph Curry shots between 28 and 40, 47 feet, the half court line, he hit 51.6% of his shots. That was 30 points better than the rest of the NBA. So this is like, in terms of redefining the sport, like Babe Ruth hitting 60 home runs in 1927, when the other nine leading home run hitters only averaged 25 home runs. So Steph Curry, Babe Ruth, way, way better than everyone else in terms of this long range power generation.